Who wants to work at ground zero? It's been the eternal question ever since the decision to go ahead and rebuild the World Trade Center. Slowly, companies are signing up. Condé Nast is going to lease space in the first building, the Freedom Tower. Plus, we and others have reported that banks, including UBS and Morgan Stanley, have considered moving down to the World Trade Center. Larry Silverstein is the real estate mogul who has been developing three other buildings at Ground Zero. World Trade Center number four is already going up, but if towers two and three are ever going to rise on the site, Silverstein needs to find some giant tenants. I sat down with Larry Silverstein earlier this week and asked him how the search is going. Well, one of the things that gives me intense, intense happiness, pleasure, is taking cognizance of the degree and the intensity and the quality of major space users looking at each of these buildings for occupancy. Who's a major space user? Who are we, what kind of companies are we talking about? Household names, all of whom you've heard, and some of whom you pick up the paper and just say, look at Bloomberg News, it's replete with a whole series of, of descriptions of different tendencies. Are we going to see a Wall Street firm return to Lower Manhattan to occupy one of those buildings? Well, uh, that's a good question and something that I'm working very intensively on. And if I have anything to say about it, they will return. So why haven't they signed a deal? Well, it takes time to do these things. When you're talking about large amounts of space, they study things very, very carefully. And by golly, they have, doing that, they have done that and continue to do it. It is a sign to me of, uh, of a great interest. Uh, in, the, in the real estate. Does it matter And it's to not you? just one, it's a series of them. There are several tenants out there looking at these buildings uh, and, and excites the hell out of me because I see this as, as a portent uh, of what is to come. Does it matter to you whether it's UBS or does it matter to you whether it's Morgan Stanley? Well, these are all good names, all good names, and I'd be happy to have any one of them. And in an absolute, an absolute reality, happy to have any one of them. And so, but they're out there. The important thing is they're there, they're looking, they're intense, uh, and they recognize the quality of what's here. And it's unlike anything else in Manhattan. There's nothing else like this in Manhattan today, nothing. That's true, but realistically, let's pause for a moment. Goldman Sachs just built a new building. Correct. Bank of America just built a new building. Correct. JP Morgan is renovating both of its buildings. Right. So that takes three potential tenants out of the equation. Maybe. We know that Morgan maybe. Stanley is running. Maybe. 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 Why maybe? Interesting, because things happen. Uh, and you need, the only way you can know what's happening is by being there. I don't think there. you're going to lure Goldman Sachs across the street I'm from not 200 saying West we would. Street. I'm not saying we would. But it's, it's quite interesting to see what happens with time. Things, things change. They almost change overnight. It's really quite, quite remarkable. Chase is coming back downtown. You, there's so, much, so many things happening. The dynamics are fluid. Okay, but beyond those three names, the point I was getting at is that there isn't much more. City? There are, there are several more. And they're large, and they need significant amounts of space, and they need everything these buildings have to offer, which they cannot get in any other buildings in the city of New York today. Simple. Larry Silverstein on the rebuilding effort at Ground Zero.